1995 is when I graduated. When I graduated, I didn't have any plans. I didn't know what I was going to do. I hadn't applied for any college. You know, all I knew was, let me get my diploma and let me go on with my life. When I graduated, I got my diploma. I'm out partying. I'm taking trips to Myrtle Beach. I'm out just having a good time. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to do with my life. I'm thinking in my head, okay, I made it. I finally made it. I got a diploma in my pocket. You know, I graduated. I'm a grown man now. At this time, you know, of course, I'm living with my parents in North Carolina, and I'm ripping and running. They're asking me, what are you going to do with your life? Are you going to go to school? Are you going to go to community college? Are you going to go get a job? And, you know, I'm just blowing them off. I'm just like, whatever. You know, life is what it is. I love to party. I was loving chasing the females. And, you know, I had a car that my parents had bought me. So I'm just everywhere. I'm all over the place. I'm out in the streets. I'm hanging out. I stopped going to church. I wasn't doing things I was supposed to do. I come home one day after a busy night out having fun, partying. I come home to my house where I live with my parents. I go to turn the key. My key don't work in the door. I'm like, what's going on? So I'm ringing the doorbell, ringing the doorbell. You got to think, this is back in 1995. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have um, the ringer on the doorbell to show the people. You know, we had no type of electronics like that back in 1995. So I'm ringing the doorbell, ringing the doorbell. My mom comes to the door with a suitcase. And I'm like, what's going on? She was like, I got all your stuff in this suitcase. My clothes, she had my clothes folded up nice and neat my drawers, my socks, my t-shirts. And she was like, you haven't made a decision on what you're gonna do with your life and you're just ripping and running and wasting time. So me and your father are gonna help you make a decision. Either you finna leave and go to college somewhere or either you finna leave and go get a job or either you finna leave and go to the military. Those are the three choices that my mother and my father gave me right there on the porch. At that time, I had to make a split decision in my mind. You know, I'm young, you know, I'm 17 years old. I'm not thinking about no responsibilities. I'm not thinking about no bills. I'm not thinking about nothing but how I'm about the next pair of shoes, how I'm about the next pair, of, the next outfit I want to get. You know, that's the only things I was thinking about in 1995. So of course I'm upset with my parents. I'm thinking, you know, y'all putting me out. What's going on? So my mom goes back in the house. She said, I'm gonna make a phone call. I sit on the porch. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm gonna just wait it out. You know, they're gonna let me back in the house. They just joking, they just playing around. My mom makes a phone call. 15 minutes later, a car pulls up in the yard. A man gets out the car with a military uniform on. I don't know nothing about the military. I don't know what the badges on his arm mean. I don't know what none of the stripes mean on his uniform. And he comes to the porch. He's like, Reginald McNair, you ready? I'm like, what? How he know my name? How he know my information? My mom is like, this is the recruiter. You going with him. I'm like, I ain't going with no recruiter. I'm not going no military. That's crazy. You know, I'm thinking in my head, you know, by this time I watched Boys in the Hood. I saw Ricky. He was like, I ain't going to no military. You know, everybody's talking crazy about the military. I'm thinking it's the worst thing possible on earth is me going to the military. My dad was a little bit more lenient on me than my mother was. My daddy was like, you know, let's think about this. Hold up, baby. Let's think about this. You know, there's got to be a better way. My mom was like, no. This boy is not finna be caught up in these streets out here. He's not finna be out here ripping and running with no direction. So, you know, I'm upset with my mama. I don't really remember what I said, but I know I was kind of like, you know, upset telling my mother, you know, that's crazy that y'all putting me out. You know, you know, I don't have nowhere to go. You know, I don't want to go to the military. I never thought about this. You know, I need some time to think about it. But the only option I had was to go out in the streets and be homeless or get in the car with a recruiter. So I said, you know, Oh well, I jump in the car with the recruiter. Me and the recruiter were having small talk and he put me in the car and he was letting me know all these wonderful things about the military, you know, everything's gonna be all right. He was really assuring me, he was really nice. He wasn't what I was used to seeing on the TV, like the drill sergeants fussing and yelling at people and barking orders. He was nice and calm, laid back. You know, he bought me something to eat on the way. He took me to Charlotte, North Carolina which is about an hour away, an hour 30 minutes away from my house. He took me to Charlotte, North Carolina. And we went to a place called the MEP Center. Now the MEP Center was considered where they in process you for the military, where they do all the paperwork. You know, you take a test to, you know, I took a test to see whether it's called the ASVAB. I took the ASVAB test and that was to show me to show them what my skill level was, to show them where my intellect was, to show them pretty much what my IQ was. So I took my test and everything, I passed. 
Now, all this is in the same day. Now, all this took place from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. all on the same day. They come out, you know, the nurse comes out. She checks my blood pressure. She checks my pulse, my height, my weight. They do a urinalysis test on me. They run some more tests. They take blood from me. Everything came back fine. I was healthy. Everything was fine. I was good to go. The recruiter's gone. He's done his job. He got me to the MIPS Center. He's made his quota for the day. He got me in the door. Now, my parents ended up coming that same day to Charlotte, North Carolina to end up. They had to sign a waiver, sign a paper saying that they released me to the military. From there, they put me on a bus. All I got is my one little suitcase. Now, they fed me and everything. They had a nice little facility in there where you could eat. You can get whatever you want. If you want cheeseburgers, if you want a pizza, they made sure we ate good. I get on the bus. They don't tell me where I'm going. They don't tell me where I'm headed. They don't tell me what I'm in for. Bus driver cool. I'm on there with maybe 30 other young people. You know, everybody look around. They're young like me. We're all telling each other where we're from. We're all telling everybody, you know, all the wild things we did, all the wild partying we did. Everybody's changing stories. The bus ride is from Charlotte, North Carolina down to Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Now, Fort Jackson is a military base where they do what they call basic training. Basic training is where you learn the basics of being a soldier. You learn physical fitness, you learn the training, all the rules and regulations, you learn how to shoot the weapon. Everything you need to know about being a soldier is what they teach you in basic training. And I ended up in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. So we're all on the bus having a good time and just laughing and joking. So we go through this big gate, we see the sign, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. I'm like, I know, you know, I'm in South Carolina. I don't know anything about South Carolina except Myrtle Beach. We pull up at the stop. The bus driver tells everybody to stay seated. Everybody's laughing, joking. We on the bus wrestling, on wrestling, laughing, showing pictures of our family and friends. You know, back then, everybody didn't have cell phones. You had what, you know, what they call a photo album. Everybody had pictures of their family and friends. All of a sudden, the drill sergeant gets on the bus, stands at the front of the bus. Everybody shut the hell up. Whoa. Oh, nah. You already were intimidated by the uniform he has on. But he jumps on the bus. Everybody shut the hell up. Sit up straight. I'm Drill Sergeant. I forgot his name. Such and such and such. Here at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Here we're going to teach you the basic skills of how to be a military and a soldier. You are going to teach you the basics that you need to learn to survive if anything ever happens where you have to be sent to war. Do you understand? Everybody looking crazy. Everybody looking around. Do you understand? Oh, man, this is crazy. I'm like, what did I get myself into? Now, I'm telling y'all, this is all in the same day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. By the time we end up at Fort Jackson, South Carolina is probably, I'm going to say, 7 p.m. that night. That same day that I left from my parents' porch, rode to Charlotte, North Carolina with the recruiter. My parents came, signed the papers, releasing me to the military. Now I end up that same day in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. I don't know nothing about where I'm at. So, he tells everybody, put your bag in your lap. Everybody put their bags in their lap. Stand up. You got two minutes to get off this bus and form a complete solid line outside on the steps. You got two minutes to get off the bus and form a straight line outside up under this patio. Your time starts now. Let's go. So, everybody's panicking. Everybody's pushing each other. We're pushing, shoving. Everybody's trying to get their bags together. Everybody, there's a couple people on the bus crying. Now, me... I was good at handling pressure. So, you know, I'm kind of laughing at it like, man, this is crazy. Because I'm like, it's so many people. This one drill sergeant is not going to be able to control all 40 of us. It's 40 of us. It's only one of him. Oh, to my surprise, when I get off that bus, as soon as we stepped off the bus, there's 10 to 15 drill sergeants screaming orders. Get over here. Get over there. They say, females on this side, males on this side. Everybody's scrambling. The drill sergeants are kicking people bags, people bags falling open, people bags are busting. I've seen people drop their suitcases, all this stuff fall out. The drill sergeants are kicking stuff around. Everybody gets lined up. You are here at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. You will do as we say. When we say anything to you, it is yes, drill sergeant, or no, drill sergeant. Do you understand? Nobody ain't saying that. Get down. Everybody get down. Get down. Oh, my God. He starts telling everybody to get down on the floor and do push-ups. I was an athlete in high school. I've been out partying for two months, you know what I'm saying, just living my life. I get down to do push-ups. I realize I can only do maybe 10 push-ups. 
after that 10, I'm, I'm laying on my stomach. I look around, there's people crying. It's people like saying they want to go home. The drill sergeant's like, now nah, stand up. Everybody jumps up. Drill sergeant says, I said, when we say, ask you a question, the answer is going to be yes, drill sergeant, or no, drill sergeant. Do you understand? This time, everybody, yes, drill sergeant. Okay. I need males in this building, females in this building. Go. Everybody take off running. We go in the building. There's drill sergeants everywhere hollering. They slapping stuff out people's hands. It's really they're doing an intimidation factor. You know, they were trying to intimidate us, you know, let that let us know who's in charge. And they showed right off the bat, as soon as they got on the bus and we got off the bus, they showed right off the bat who's in charge. We run, 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 run. I go into the barracks. The building that you live in, that they house you in, is called a barracks. There is maybe a hundred bunk beds inside this building that we're in. The bunk beds are lined up, lined up, side by side, side by side, side by side. Everybody get in front of a bunk. I get in front of the bunk bed. Dude runs up beside me, he get in front beside me. It was two people to a bunk. So he get beside me, I'm like, yo, my name McNair, what's your name? He says his name McQueen, I'll never forget McQueen. McQueen said, my name is McQueen, I said, my name is McNair. So we're all standing up straight. The drill sergeant said, put your suitcases, bags down in front of you. We put our bags down. They said, dump everything out in front of you. I'm like, this is crazy. So we continue, we dump the bags in front of us. Everybody dump their bags down on the ground. Boom, boom, boom. So as you can tell, it's stuff scattered everywhere. I mean, it's clothes, socks, shoes. So all 15 of the drill sergeants, well, no, I take that back. They were half and half. There was maybe seven drill sergeants in there with us. The drill sergeants are going through everybody's stuff. You can't have this. They throwing stuff in the trash can. People had all kind of candy, cookies. People had uh, snack cakes. I had sandwiches, snack cakes, all kind of stuff that my mama had packed for me. They took all that stuff and threw it in the trash can right in front of us. I'm telling you, it's people still crying. By the end, the shock is, you know, you're out of the shock stage, right, at this point, by the time you get inside the barracks. At this point, you're in total fear. Like, you don't know what's going to go on. People were having panic attacks. People were uh, having troubles breathing. It was an intense moment. I'm going to tell you, that moment, I realized my life had changed forever. And as I sat in that bunk, I thought about all the things my parents had done for me. I thought about all the places I could have been. I thought about maybe I should have went to college. I should have did this. I should have did that. But at that moment, I realized that I had just went from being a boy to being a man. In Fort Jackson, South Carolina, I'm telling you, I learned a lot of things in basic training. And I mean, it was rough at first, but day by day, I could feel myself getting stronger. The first day out running, I only lasted maybe. Man, listen, it was people falling out. They line us up in rows of four. There's 10 people in each row. There's four rows. We're running down the street. The drill sergeant's calling out commands. He's calling out a cadence. Left, 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 right, or left. Every time he says left, your left foot should hit the ground. That is how they keep in step together. If you ever see soldiers marching side by side, there is one person on the outside of the formation who's calling out the formation. They're calling out the steps. They're calling out the, the moves that each person is supposed to do inside that formation. So the drill sergeant is like, left, left. Left, right, or left. Every time he says left, your left foot hits the ground. The military was the best experience I ever had. I've never met so many wonderful people. I've never, I never thought I'd go to places I went. I was so proud and so happy to wear that uniform. I'm gonna tell you, with those six years of my life, changed my life forever. And it made me to end up being a responsible adult. It taught me a lot of things about responsibility. I encourage anyone out there who's thinking about going to the military if you're a younger person thinking about going to the military college is not your thing you know this is not a promotion about for the military I'm just speaking from my experience my behalf and every day I wish that I would have stayed in the military because I have my friends that went in with me in 1995 and that came up with me in the military they still stay they stayed in and now some of them are retiring at age 44, they're already retired, and they're just doing jobs that they like to do. You know, the military is still taking care of them. You know, I'm just proud to be an American. I'm proud to say that I'm, you know, I'm a veteran. Anybody out there who's in the military watching this video, I like to say that we all appreciate your service. I love everybody. Peace.